It only took them 12 years, but they've finally done it. 12 years I've waited to see all of the new weapons they've introduced to the game. All of the new skills and perks that they've given us to slay zombies with. Just so I could ignore them and use my meat hooks instead. Or as I call them, the chin slappers. I named them after my nuts. Sure, this game has hundreds of weapons to make use of, but do you really need them? Are they even worth picking up? Do you enjoy fisting zombies? Can you beat Dead Island 2 using only your fists? As with all of my challenges, I like to lay down some ground rules before we jump into this zombie slaying shit show. The rules for this one are pretty simple. I can only use my fists as a primary weapon. This means no melee weapons, no guns, and no curveballs. Along with my fists, I'm also able to use my feet, simply because it makes a run more enjoyable and you technically can't beat the challenge without them because you wouldn't be able to move anywhere. Sorry, that was, that was bad. I'm not going too strict on this run. Any environmental explosives or traps can be used as well. This includes punching the grenades on the army guy vests, punching the flammable tanks on certain zombies, or using bursters to take out hordes. So without further ado, allow me to introduce to you our slayer for the run, Ryan. I chose Ryan as a slayer because of his pole dancing, I mean innate skills. I chose him for his innate skills. His innate skills give me health regeneration when the zombie is knocked down and a force boost on successful blocks. The advantage of this will be really clear about midway through the run when things are getting tough and I'm all out of medkits. After patching my wounds with a dinosaur plaster, skirting some flames and meeting some other survivors, I was faced with my first enemy of the run. This game makes you pick up a wreckage machete to break some boxes before giving you access to your inventory. This means you can't drop your weapon and use your fists until you've killed the first enemy. As you'd imagine, that makes our run a bit difficult, so with no other choice, I decided to use my feet. For some reason, the developers also decided that kicking this particular enemy should only do 1 HP of damage. This zombie got the shit kicked out of him. After 5 business days, I finally laid our friend to rest and the real game began. I dropped my weapons and got into my Muhammad Ali stance. I tried to write a boxing joke here, but I couldn't come up with a punchline. As we were fighting our first set of enemies in the entire game, it dawned on me already that this was going to be a tough run. Having no dodge or dropkick yet really made this challenging. After defeating my first wave of zombies and trying to help some fellow survivors, I got bit, fell asleep, and woke up in Bel Air. It turns out if I have any weapons in my weapon wheel, then I cannot swap to my fists. I had to either throw the weapons away or not pick them up in the first place. This meant I wouldn't be able to sell them later on to make extra money, or so I thought. This wasn't actually the case, you see. I did this run blind. It was my first time playing the game. As I'm writing this script, I've completed the game three times and I realized I could have just added those weapons to my backpack and not the weapon wheel to sell later. Luckily, Ryan has enough cash for this run from his days as a firefighter. My other two playthroughs I just mentioned are challenge runs also, so if you want to get updated when I upload them in the future, I recommend you hit that subscribe button down below. After scavenging, looting, and being a handyman, I unlocked my first major ability of the run, the block ability. Not only does blocking allow me to ignore damage from enemy attacks, if timed perfectly, it will also stun some of the smaller zombies, allowing my slayer to follow up with a grab that does a large amount of damage. I mean, Ryan literally puts his fist through their faces. Seems like a good perk to me. My favorite thing about this ability and the grab attack is that it plays an animation that gives you invincibility frames. You can't get damaged at all when in this animation. All the zombies around you just stop and wait their turn like guys in line at an orgy. This is why I chose Ryan, not because of the orgy thing for his block regen perks and innate skills. Finally, with all my main abilities in place, I can put them to good use. I slaughtered absolutely everybody outside of Emma's house. After my sparring session with everyone in the neighborhood, Sam B landed, told me I was zombie proof, and then showed me how to upgrade my weapons. I sold those weapons straight away. Right in front of his face too. With Sam's feelings shattered, I left for the Halpern Hotel to contact the authorities and let them know I'm immune and special. Before I began my journey, I looted Emma's room and, uh, admired her paintings. Emma has the most important card in the game, the Investigator card. This card grants Ryan health regen on every single successful block. This means I'll get health when I block them and again if I knock them down afterwards. The game was now fully open for me to explore and explore I did. Every zombie out there wanted me. I was as popular as a cucumber in an all woman's prison. I didn't mind this either because I needed the XP so I explored a chest cavity of every zombie out there. On my way to the Halpern Hotel, I drop kicked some former vloggers off a balcony, played the piano with my fists, and beat up a unicorn for looking at me funny. The Halpern Hotel was absolutely swamped with zombies. It felt like hundreds of them. This was the point of realization where I knew that the maximum of five medkits wasn't going to help me this run. Luckily, with my perk cards leaning towards health regeneration, I didn't have to rely on the medkits. 
After drop kicking some zombies into a pool, beating the crap out of a lonely bride and blowing up some random hotel room, I managed to get hold of the doc on the radio. The doc wants me to meet him in Santa Monica because of course, I'm the cure. You know, I thought I killed a bride earlier. Turns out that was a stunt double because the real bride came out of nowhere. And oh, was she big and ugly. He's ugly, 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 ugly! Becky was the purest definition of a meat shield that I've ever seen. She didn't only have a lot of health, her attacks dealt a lot of damage too. It took me four med kits and over a hundred hits to take her down. I then celebrated Becky's death. All too prematurely as well because the drill sergeant down the road absolutely obliterated me. It turns out Becky wasn't the last of her kind and we will be seeing these big guys a lot more now. This guy was actually harder than Becky's fight. I ran back to Emma's with my new plan to head to Santa Monica and leveled up in the process. I got my first Slayer perk which grants me minor damage boost when I block or take damage. Turns out Michael ran away and we can't leave without him so we need to make our way to Beverly Hills and bring him back. I don't know how he managed but Michael got through an entire horde of enemies on his way to Beverly Hills. I'm actually pretty impressed. I don't see any of these big crushers on the floor but he still managed to run past them. After talking to some absolute morons in Beverly Hills and helping them out with their zombie problems, they pointed me in the direction of a construction site up the road. I tried to dance with the zombies but they didn't seem to like that idea so I slaughtered them all instead. Well I slaughtered most of them anyway, this house is completely booby trapped so that took some of them out as well. I saved our damsel in distress Jessie and she told me that Michael was at Monarch Studios. Quite a few zombies stood between us and Monarch Studios. But no matter, we had the almighty power of health regeneration in our hands. Like, literally. If it wasn't for the health regeneration abilities in this run, the difficulty would be tenfold. Speaking of difficulty, I got stuck behind a fire hydrant and burnt to death. You'd think Ryan would have some fire resistance being a former firefighter, but nope. This place was hotter and drier than a camel's asshole in a sandstorm. I reached level 8 and unlocked a blockbuster perk, which makes my block cause a forceful explosion to nearby enemies knocking them back. Monarch Studios has the largest number of enemies in any area of this game. There were at least three sections where I had to kill them all. Inside the studio and green screen rooms, inside the soundstage rooms, and then the mix between these rooms were all packed with every type of enemy. This made it extremely challenging and with that, extremely fun. It gave me a sense of accomplishment when I had them all laid out around me. A sense of accomplishment that didn't last too long because shortly after finding Michael, I was greeted by a new enemy. Alessis Hernandez, the caustic slobberer. I could smell this guy before I saw him. Like the smell of a million garbage trucks having an orgy. This was the toughest fight of the run so far. Alessis didn't just have an insane health pool, he was also constantly standing in a caustic puddle. This meant getting up close and personal could only be done for short periods at a time. Between dodging his army of zombies, his ranged spit attacks and the pools of caustic waste he left lying around, this fight took time. I ended up using all of my med kits and relied on blocking as my main source of health regeneration. Like all of the other titans of this run, Alessis too fell to my fists. Not long after telling Michael to head back to Emma's, Sam B contacted us and asked him to help him out with a heist. I'm always down for a heist. But first we had to get the keys to the gate from Phil. This should be easy enough. Phil is big. Big or not, I beat the shit out of Phil and his friends pretty easily. I rendezvoused with Sam and Ronnie. Ronnie got eaten and Nikki introduced herself by means of screaming her head off. A new enemy type that is weak to ranged weapons. Great. Nikki killed me in seconds on my first attempt. Her scream slowed me down completely and I was still figuring out a strategy to kill her since this was a blind run. I found that the explosive blast perk from my block helps a lot when there are a large swarm of enemies. Now normally the next section is supposed to be easy since you're given your first gun, but of course I have to do it all with my meat hooks. So with no fear, I jumped straight into the fire and burnt to a crisp. These enemies on fire pose a serious threat to a little guy with only his fists. I realized I had to be a bit more careful next time. It took all my heals to deal with the first wave of enemies and I barely killed the caustic slobberer at the end. These fights just keep getting tougher. This is becoming a running theme now. Back at Emma's, Michael was shot in the head. Turns out he was infected. Maybe I gave him too much credit earlier. Emma was pretty pissed that her best friend just died, so she kicked me out. With nobody to help, her little stripper Ryan had decided to make my way through the sewers to Santa Monica, alone. I wouldn't say the sewers were overly easy. Quite a few screamers, crushers, and we even met a new explosive enemy type, the Burster. More importantly, we met Patton, who saved our ass and pointed us in the right direction. Just a note for all of you out there going through the sewers near Dead Island 2 runs, don't drop kick the caustic slobberers like I did. They'll just cover you in vomit and sit in you, like a drunken wife after one too many kebabs. After being sat on and smothered by a 900 pound slobberer, I thought I'd seen it all. 
That was before I landed at the gate to hell. I've seen some nasty holes, but this one definitely wins. Naturally, I ran as fast as I could to escape the slimy horror and the worst seemed to be behind me. That was until I met a lady called Condrant who knocked me off a bridge into a pit of horror. With the bad come the good though because that was when I unlocked the fury ability. This ability essentially turns me into a zombie and allows me to rip and tear until it is done. Since Ryan still uses his meat hooks in Fury, I'm allowing it for this run. You'll see later on why it's required also. Ryan's build and playstyle I have at the moment are perfect for the Fury ability as well because the Fury gauge builds on each kill or successful block. I made my way out of the sewers and headed over to help out some guys with crabs. While clearing out the crab boys parking lot, I met a new enemy type the spiked zombies. These guys, as you can guess, cause a bleeding effect every time you hit them. They're especially dangerous on a fist only run as well. They managed to kill me once or twice, but I was able to close the parking lot gate and get inside. It was at this point that I realized I had a new perk called War Cry that I hadn't made use of yet. This ability allows me to bring out my inner Dovahkin and shout at zombies. This upsets and weakens them, allowing me to deal more damage per hit. The crab guys wanted me to find their two friends, Moose and Dylan, who had been zombified. So off I went, bodybuilder zombies. Great. It turns out they either aren't that strong or Patton is an absolute animal because I found him digging inside Moose's chest cavity. Patton says the autophage makes these guys grow to abnormal sizes and with that I unlocked autophage perks. Unfortunately these weren't of any use to me just yet. It turns out that Patton is an absolute animal because Dylan was the hardest zombie to take down so far. It didn't help that he was on fire the entire time either. I initially went in with Fury to see how much damage I could do to him at the start. Quite a bit, but not enough, because moments later he sent me hurtling towards Valhalla. His attacks deal quite a lot of damage, and there aren't any smaller enemies I can use to block attacks and regen health from. I knew I'd have to use more than one Fury meter, so I damaged Dylan as much as I could so that he would spawn in his minions. I killed all his minions as quickly as I could and used Fury again. Dylan was at 1 HP for what felt like ages, but I was terrified of dying when I could see the finish line in sight. So after dodging for some time, I mustered up all my courage and went in for the kill. That was extremely tough. During the beach offensive mission, I had to make my way to the Serling Hotel through the militarized zone. Originally, I thought this would be pretty easy since I could just run past everyone and go through the gates to the next area. Nope. Turns out the game wants me to kill them all. And there were hundreds of them. I died so many times in this area, from being swarmed and ambushed to getting obliterated during an animation. On the run that I didn't die, it took 5 real life minutes of straight killing and 3 full fury meters to kill them all. I did indeed rip and tear until it was done. With the blood of my enemies on my hands and legs, and everywhere for that matter, I made my way to the Serling Hotel and finally met the good Dr. Reed. The doc told the CDC about my immunity, but they wanted proof of it. So I had to make my way to the beach where the doc CDC equipment is located and run some tests. I traveled through the sewers, reached the pier, and was greeted by some high-level PPE wearing zombies. These guys were extremely tough to deal with and the kill em all sections only got harder. After extracting my blood using the doc CDC equipment in the lab, I was faced with the hardest encounter yet, the lifeguard HQ. It took me a total of six attempts in this area to kill all of the enemies. There were two big crushers and piles of smaller zombies that absolutely destroyed me over and over and over again. If it wasn't for Fury, I'd have broken my keyboard. Luckily, my keyboard survived and so did I, so I celebrated my victory. The doc wants me to do him a favor and retrieve his laptop that's covered in furry porn. The blood drive isn't sitting on a random bench at the side of the road either. Nope, instead it's at the very end of the carnival. This means I have to fight my way there. And I fought so many enemies. The Fury Scream ability did a lot for me here, weakening the enemy so I could finish them off with my fists. That sounds a lot weirder when I say it out loud. After slaughtering all of these previously happy beings, I made my way to the end of the pier and was confronted by the scariest thing I've possibly ever seen, a zombie clown. Well, that's a new fear unlocked. What kind of monster developer combines these horrifying things? I said earlier that the Lifeboat HQ fight was tough. Well, this butcher clown was just as hard, if not harder. My first attempt went really well, I managed to get a third of his health off before using Fury or medkits. Unfortunately, he one hit me and I died. I got extremely close on my second attempt, but no cigar. I couldn't get my in-game Fury meter to fill, even though my real-life Fury meter was maxed. Luckily, attempt number three was different. 
I was accustomed to this butcher clown's moveset by now and dodged around him enough to land a few hundred punches to his squeaky nose. I couldn't sleep for a week after this fight. I gave the doc back his furry porn and being as spoiled as he is, he asked me to do him another favor and find his daughter Tisha while he examined my blood. After talking to Tisha and breaking into Condran's store downtown, Tisha and I realized that the doc has a secret lab nearby. Turns out the doc didn't just want to do a simple experiment on me because I was immune. He wanted to do a lot more. Noah was living proof of this. Noah was also extremely hungry and wanted to eat my face. I died pretty fast in my first attempt fighting Noah. After learning his attack patterns a bit more, I made use of Fury and destroyed him. Not as tough as I was expecting for the next boss. So I didn't teabag him. I just ate him instead. Ryan's more of a giver than a receiver, you know? Tisha knocked me out, Condrant saved me, and then Reed and Tisha flew out on a chopper. A lot happened in that next section. Reed and Tisha flew to a lab on Hollywood Boulevard, so I made a plan with Emma to meet her, Sam B, and Patton so we could all chase Reed down. I met up with my team and Patton led us into a nearby metro. This will get us to Hollywood Boulevard faster, he says. This might have been faster, but Patton failed to mention how difficult it would be. Most of the metro area was pretty basic. I punched a few zombies in the face, stamped on a few of their heads, and drop kicked a few more. Nothing special. The end of this area was not so simple, though. You see, there are two sections at the very end of the metro where you have to kill everybody for the next section to unlock. Both of these sections are about as dangerous as playing Russian roulette with an automatic gun. The first area has a metro sleeper, the same enemy as Noah before, a screamer and a bunch of normal zombies. This might not sound tough, but I died so many times here. Seven times to be exact. It didn't matter if I used my fury to attack the small enemies first, or the sleeper first, or the screamer, the others swarmed and destroyed me. At one point I was even killed during fury mode by the metro sleeper. It also didn't help that medkits were absolutely useless at this point in the run and didn't heal much of my health. With one keyboard destroyed and one metro sleeper down, I got the key and ran into the next area. This area was almost as tough as the previous one. I had to power up a train here and survive 3 or 4 waves of enemies. This consisted of almost every enemy in the game. The first two waves were relatively easy and didn't cause me much stress, but the third wave was where it got tough. Between the Inferno Crusher who kept beating me up and lighting me on fire and his friend that spat caustic bile at me, I died 5 times in total. As per usual however, my meat hooks were victorious and we made our way out of the metro with our team. This was it, the final mission. Time to face Dr. Reed and end him for good. I thought the metro sleeper was difficult in the tunnel before. Well, turns out that the Rubinator is the same enemy type but twice as tough. I didn't even get to learn his attack patterns on my first attempt because he just one hit me. Great start. Attempt number two didn't go much better and on my third attempt he obliterated me while I was in fury mode and still had HP. He's just that strong. I was getting the hang of it now though. I knew his attack patterns and I had a plan made up in my head on how to deal damage to him but also to use the smaller zombies to regain my own health. I don't think the Ruminator was as difficult as other enemies and areas I've encountered in the game but he definitely was not easy. After laying the good doctor to rest with my fists I made my way out of the lab and headed for the chopper. And there you have it. Can you beat Dead Island 2 with only your fists? Yes, it turns out you can. Can you beat Dead Island 2 with only your fists and not rage quit? No, no you cannot. Overall, this was probably one of the most enjoyable runs I've done in this challenge. Not only did I go into this run blind without playing the game previously, it's also a game that doesn't have a difficulty slider. I feel like this made it more rewarding at the end. If you enjoyed this challenge then make sure you hit that subscribe button down below because I've already got another one planned and recorded for you guys next week. Thank you all very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Until next time.